Hey y'all, so I've seen a few videos lately on the grease pencil tool, how to use it in Blender, how to get some painterly effects like watercolor and whatnot, and figured I'd do a quick tutorial on how to get that up and running. Hey y'all, me from the future. Uh, I'm gonna put this up front just to see if this appeases the algorithm gods. If you can, please like, comment, or subscribe. It really helps me out, and uh, we're helping to grow this channel as fast as we can to get the best content out there for 3D artists in the field. Appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and delete what we have in here. And my goal is going to be to create like a, a brief planetary scene and uh, make it look a bit painterly and make it kind of cool mixing 3D and 2D. So I'm going to go ahead and add a mesh and we'll add in a UV sphere. And I'm going to scale this up to essentially be our planet. So from here, we want to do a sub D uh, subdivision surfaces. I'm just going to crank this up to uh, something like four and I'm going to go ahead and apply it because we're going to be using vertex paint. And if you have less vertices, meaning that you still have this modifier in place and that they're not actually applied, you'll have less fidelity, uh, less resolution that you can paint onto the model itself. So I'll go ahead and apply that. And then we want to do another modifier for solidify. And what I'm trying to do right now is basically create an outline that looks hand painted. Um, so we're not going to see anything updating here. Uh, I'll go ahead and switch us over to this view um, so that we're looking at the shading as we're getting into this. And what I want to do with solidify is come into our normals and flip them. Make this 0 0.05 just for the sake of being able to see it. And then we want to come into the materials and do a material offset of one. Uh, what we need to do next is ensure that we actually have materials on this. So I'm going to hit create new, and then we're going to create another new material so that this will be the offset that we're using for the solid back face material. Uh, I can go ahead and come in here and just remove it from BDSF and make this back face culling. Um, so this way it's going to give us a nice outline no matter where we look, that's going to look uh, more painterly, more hand-drawn. And if we want to push this even further, um, I'll give a shout out uh, in the description below to where I saw this, but there's a, a neat trick here where we can add a modifier and do a displacement. And what we're going to do is, is run a displacement texture over this so that it all looks a bit uh, interesting. So now that we have that, we can turn the strength down and I can come over here into the texture itself and do a, a drop down into clouds over here in type. So what that's going to do is give us something that looks a bit more warbly uh, as if someone has drawn it. You can see some changes in uh, variations within the depth of the outline as well as some variation within the sphere itself. Um, so that's looking pretty cool. I'm actually happy with that as is. Don't need to do a ton more here. And now we want to get into vertex paint. So we want to get on here and start painting directly onto the mesh. Best way to do that I've found is to go into shading. And over here, we're going to select the first material that we have. What we want to do is to create a vertex color node in here, but vertex color is no longer a thing as of uh, a little while ago. I'm actually not sure when it changed out, but it's now called color attributes. So what we want to do for that is to come up here into data and within data, we want to go to color attributes, add, and then we'll add this as a vertex color. So now that I've done that, I can right click over here, hit spacebar for search, and I can type in color attribute. And once I have color attribute placed, I can actually just drag color over into surface and drag this over here. And we are good to go. So what's happening now is that it's all going to be black until we paint in the color attribute ourselves. So I'm going to come back out to, let's just say we're inside of layout. And here I want to go into vertex paint mode. I can increase my radius and let's say I want this to be um, some kind of chill colors. And I can come in here and start to paint. Um, there are hotkeys to do like a full fill here, but I kind of like the idea of painting 
with just mouse and keyboard. I also do have a tablet down here that we can use in just a bit, but for now I'm just using a mouse, so nothing too fancy. It has a little bit of variation, which I kind of like. And now from here we can come in and just do a few, uh, few basic things. So let's say we want some variation in color. And let's say maybe here that we have at the north and south some differences. And then I want to come in here and draw in something more akin to landforms, something like that, since we're doing something planetary. Uh, from here, I'm going to take the size of brush way in, so the radius is coming down through hitting lower bracket. And now I can come in here and start to draw a few organic shapes. And now that I've done that, I can come in here and follow up. So I'm going to do that on repeat, and we're just going to do a few shapes that I think look kind of interesting and like land masses. And after that, we will move on into the grease pencil. So let's stick with this for just a second. And if we want to, we can even come back into this tool over here within Vertex Paint, and we can do some blurring right at the edges so it doesn't look quite as hard. And I think that's going to look pretty good right there. So there's one piece of land. And then uh, this next one, let's see, let's move a little bit faster. I'll just create something similar to this. And the nice thing is because we're vertex painting in 3D, all of this is applying onto the surface of the sphere. Say there's a little landmass up top. And this is one of those things where you really can't go wrong. It's very much a Bob Ross style, very therapeutic type of painting. And then I'll come back in here and just blur some of the edges so that it starts to blend between the colors a bit better. All right, very good. So I feel like we're in a decent spot with what this planet is starting to look like. Now let's get into the grease pencil and do some outlines on our planet. So I'm going to come back into object mode. I'm going to add, and we're gonna add in a grease pencil blank. And now from here, I can go back to object mode and go into draw mode where we are in our grease pencil. So we want to come back in and using the vertex paint here, I'm going to paint in some black outlines. And one of the things that we need to do is change origin over to surface so that we're painting effectively on the surface of what we're looking at. We also want to take this offset down to something like 0 0.01. And let's do something a bit dark for right now. So I'm just coming in here, outlining some of these shapes. And the cool thing is it's drawing it all for me. I can also increase strength if we want to. So that from here, it's all going to be a bit darker. I'll come back in here and I'm not going to worry about getting rid of what we had previously. I'm just going to draw another line over it. And we're moving pretty quick through here just to make sure that we keep this to a uh, reasonable length of a tutorial. And this is looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's starting to look kind of cool and uh, painterly. Next, what we can do is come back in and append Blender with a brush pack so that we can start painting in a more interesting way. So let's say I come in here and I do an append, come into Documents, Tools, go into our brush pack here, and I will link this in the description. This again is from that other creator, Gaku, uh, who has previously posted videos on this type of workflow. So I'm going to append with those brushes, and now if I come back into the pencil, I can start to grab things like the oil, and I'm going to change over to origin, increase my size, and start to paint. And what we're noticing is that because it's on origin, 
it's painting aligned to origin from where my camera is. So actually what we may do is just leave it on surface for right now. But instead we're gonna step this up to point one. And what I wanna do is draw in a few clouds. So I'm also gonna take the strength way down. And let's see, let's adjust this further to point zero two. There we go, that's looking pretty cool. So now we're starting to get a layer of clouds above, kind of an atmosphere around the planet. Okay, and then we're going to make this something like 0 .002, and we'll make something like a uh, basic asteroid belt coming around the side here, and just to make it more interesting, perhaps we do something a bit more nebula-esque. Okay, so we're going to do something 0 .01, let's take the strength down to, Point two, so that it's going to be pretty easy to see through and start painting around some sort of nebula. And I'm aware this is not the way the space works, but we're doing this in a bit more of an artistic way just because it's something that looks kind of cool. Last thing that I think we want to do is to change out the background, make it something lighter so that it all feels a bit less heavy come over into our lit environment, come down to our G pencil window and turn off use lights so that it all is a bit easier to breathe. And then we wanna just turn off a few things like the floor and the axes. And now we can see something that's starting to look a bit more special and interesting. And in whatever aesthetic you want to be drawing in. So hopefully that's helpful. We've gone through grease pencil. We've gone through how to create what's called a, a whole mask usually, which is that flipping of the outline layer. Uh, we went through a custom brush import as well as how to get something up and going quickly, combining a 3D shape and some 2D drawing. Thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something here. Have a great day. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you